and hit. This is where we want to start. Don't be up on the table. Don't splash the pot. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, let's sh let's shuffle them all up like dominoes. How about that? See people get stressed. Larry, <laughs> I, 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 I was just telling him it looks like everybody's putting in for a poker game. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. We don't need this, right? We know who we are. <laughs> the royal we? What does that mean? We. I guess I do. <laughs> Okay. Players have re responded to this question about you've got a 12 game slate, et cetera. How do you get them to buy into that? And, you know, if you were to, to win a division championship, you're not eligible to go to Charlotte. But so, so how do they get through that? Well, the, the first thing is, is, you know, when we first found out, it was, it was sitting down you know, and being honest with them. I mean, this is what it is, okay? I mean, you know, and then let, letting them say what they want to say. Let them express their frustration. Uh, they got to all say what they want to say, talk about it. And once they were done, then we said, okay, here's the plan, all right? For the first time in my life, I mean, you know, I know we have 12 games, that's it. Now, if I'm a senior, and I know I only have 12 games left, I'm gonna take advantage of each and every one of them. I'm not gonna take anything for granted. I'm gonna, no matter how I feel, no matter what the weather is, whether we're playing on asphalt and the gravel or who we're playing or what color our helmets and our jerseys, or nothing matters. I got an opportunity and I'm only gonna have 12 of them to play a game that I love and to go out and put that interlocking NC on my side of my helmet or on my chest and represent the University of North Carolina. So, you know, for them, I think now it's the point, you know what, I've got 12, we're gonna focus on one, and we're gonna, we're gonna make, make the most of that one, and then when that one's done, then we'll focus on the next one. And, you know, not take anything for granted, because you, you can't. Coach, from what, what you built at Southern Miss and coming from that, from that program where you were successful, what's been, not, you know, aside from NCAA stuff, what's uh, on the field, what's been the biggest adjustment for you and the new players? Uh, well, it's, it's, you know, I was there for going four seasons, and so you, you tend to forget what it's like when you start, you know, and so that's the biggest adjustment, again, is going back and starting over and starting from scratch and remember the frustrations that are involved in starting over and, uh, you know, and then trying to, you know, remember what those frustrations were like and, and you know, whether you're, you're you know, you're, you're coming along at the same pace and, and all those things. So at least I've done it before. That was the nice thing. And so I was able to look back, go back, look at notes from four years ago, look at mistakes that I felt like I'd made four years ago, and now not make those mistakes, you know, in, in this transition. One of the uh, challenges to you, you know, in the years of going to Cream Press soon, took over a program that had a long time good name and then got into some trouble. Mm -hmm. so how do you face things like negative recruiting and that sort of thing? Yeah, you know, that, that, that was a, I think that was probably more prevalent before the sanctions came out, you know, because they could, they could say whatever they wanted to say. Uh, now it is what it is. Everybody knows. It's not like we tried to keep it a secret. I mean, you know, when it's been talked about and written about and, you know, over and over and over, we're now, you know, I think kids, they're just, they're tired of hearing about it. I mean, they, they don't want to hear about it anymore. But one, the, the, the bowl ban doesn't affect anybody that we're recruiting. There won't be anybody on campus that we're recruiting that will be affected by that. And so really, it's not something that they, I, you know, I don't think a lot of them even think about anymore. Do you think the program is finally at a point that it can, I guess, put all that behind it, taking the field now with that certainty of knowing, you know, what the outcome is in the NCAA investigation? Is it finally passed? Yeah, I, I don't think it is. I know it is. I mean, I, I know that we're at a point where we're going to, you know, we're moving forward. But the, the team, the players, we've been moving forward since – the sanctions came out, you know, so now it's just a, a matter of, you know, I think our, our fans, I think, you know, they're tired of it anyway. They're tired of it. They don't want to hear about it anymore. I think, you know, everybody's excited about the new season. Everybody's excited that college football is just around the corner, and that's all anybody wants to talk about right now. Coach, I know you're coming into, uh, much like my last question, you're coming into a situation where you're just getting familiar with the players. You're just learning what they can do off, on the field. Um, just kind of, kind of talk about uh, – what your approach is with with these guys as far as like de developing them into your your style? I know you run more of a spread than than they had in the past. Um, do you feel how do you, how do you, I guess how do you feel like the players you have are going to fit your style? 
Well, you know, that's one of my biggest fears is that we may not have somebody in the right place or we may not take full advantage of somebody's skills because we don't know about them. And so that's something that we challenge ourselves as coaches all the time, making sure we figure out what each and every young man can do and what they can't do. Then, if you're a good football coach, then you take your philosophy and you take your offense or your defense and you mold it around the talent you have. So the offense won't be the same as it was at Southern Miss. The defense won't be the same as it was at Southern Miss uh, because we have different players. Now, you know, so it, it's whether, you know, whether or not they fit it or not doesn't matter. It's, it's whether we do a good job molding the offense and the defense around what they can do. Then recruiting, you know, the players that we feel maybe fit it better, you know, down for the long run. Coach, you talk about molding. You, you didn't watch any game film from the bowl game or really anything else. Have you have you still not seen any film on the guys? You're only going with what you've seen. Yeah, on that 15 field. days. 15 days of practice. That's all I'm going on. And then I'll go through the 29 days of uh, fall camp. And, and, you know, we'll make all our decisions based on that, you know. so Because really, for me, it really doesn't matter what they did before. And then, you know, and, and, and I can't go back because I told them I wasn't going to. The very first day, I said, whatever you want to be, you know, you're, you're building your resume today, and, and you'll build it every day from this point on. Whatever you want to be, it doesn't matter what you've been in the past, whether you've been lazy, you've been overweight, you, you, you hadn't been very strong, whatever it is. If that's whatever you choose to be from this point on, you can be. And and so most of them have taken that uh, to heart. Now, is that your philosophy, or is that also kind of compounded by the fact of what happened with Carolina before you got there? To, no, to not at all. that's just my philosophy. I, you know, I've been, uh, you know, now taking this offense into what this is the fifth program so uh, I, I've never looked at any film on any other player before that ever before so Larry what have you learned since coming about Kevin Reddick um, both as a young man and a football player yeah I, I first let me say just the first thing I learned about Kevin Reddick is he is a great person you know, and a, a very fine representative of the University of North Carolina. I mean, he's just a, a good person with a good heart. Uh, he really understands and has bought in. Uh, I mean, he was one of the guys that after we talked about it as seniors that, hey, you guys can, you know, you can leave if you want. You know, you, you can do whatever you want. I mean, he was the first one to stand up and say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm gonna have a, we're going to have a great season here next year. You know, and so he's a leader on our defense. Uh, he's very, very well respected amongst his teammates because of his work ethic and the way he carries himself, both on the field and off. What has been the learning curve for your offense at the five places you've been before, I guess the four that you've been before? How it's, long has it taken? It's been a little bit different in, in every one, uh, you know, based on, you know, the, the, the personnel and the, the talent level, you know, and how quickly we as coaches adjust to the talent level, you know, so we make sure that we can do the things that they can do and don't mess with the things they can't do. And so we're, we're still in the process of figuring that out. I mean, I don't think you're going to do that in 15 days, but by the end of fall camp, we got to be able to do that. Uh, you know, but it's, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what the time frame that is that it takes because we got to be ready September 1. You know, and that's what I tell them all the time. You got to have a sense of urgency about everything we do. You know, I mean, I've, I've gone throughout the entire summer telling them, okay, you got 75 days, you got 60 days, you got 50 days. We're coming up on 30 here next week. You know, and so. Uh, I mean, it's, we're counting it down, and we got to make sure that we're, you know, we're taking advantage of those days and not just counting them down. That we got to take advantage of each and every one. What was the smoothest one in terms of installing it at a place you've been? Uh, you know, probably Southern Miss. Probably Southern Miss because uh, the quarterback made it that way, you know, and, and I anticipate that same way here. I think uh, I think Bryn shows a lot of the same intangibles of the quarterback that we had back there with Austin Davis. And so I, I think, uh, you know, what I learned from, from Austin, you know, I see Bryn being able to do some of the things, same things, but also have more talent than Austin had. Did you think the uh, NCAA purposely sent out a strong message to David's Penn State stuff? I don't think there's any doubt about it. I think uh, each time uh, as, as we go, uh, you know, in college football, I think every time they do something now, they're, they're sent, trying to send a stronger and stronger message each and every time until eventually, hopefully, everybody understands the message. Do you think, you think the coaches are and the administrators are getting the message? You know, I hope so. I, I hope so. Uh, I don't know if you can ever totally eliminate everything that's going to happen out there, but uh, I think making everybody aware of it is, is what's important. And I think, 
I think people were getting closer to it. If they're not, they're, they're, they're awful stubborn. One last thing on it. Would, uh, would you seek some of these Penn State players because they're free to go? Yeah, I, I don't know that yet. You know, it's it's still about, uh, you know, because, I mean, it happened this morning and, and uh, you know, I haven't had time to look at you, you got to know you got to be able to manage your own roster first and see what you've got. You can't just take kids. You got to base, based on the, the amount of initials you've got to give, the amount of uh, scholarships you've got to give overall, you know. Uh, so I'd have to look at that and see. Could you talk about the difference in uh, offensive line play in the pro style versus the spread? And are these guys, uh, these were. These were some of the most athletic offensive linemen at Carolina, mm -hmm. but are they athletic enough to be what you need in a spread? Oh yeah, they're definitely athletic enough. And I mean, the the thing that these guys these guys are not only athletic enough, they're big. I mean, they're really big, you know. But uh, if you look at them now compared to they were at the beginning of the summer, they're not near as big as they were, you know. So uh, I know our, our strength coach, Coach Hernandez, has, has carved a little bit of. Uh, of weight off some of these guys, which all he's done is build up their work capacity because not, that each and every one of them to a man has gotten stronger, but they've also cut body body fat. So, you know, that just means their work capacity is going up and uh, they'll be able to do some great things this year.